since Python 3.7, we can just add the at data class to classes. This annotation will tell Python that this is a data class. And then you can just define a list of fields and they would be automatically added to the constructor, to the representation. You can say whether you can check the uh, equality of Python classes with these fields. Because the usual way was to define a class, class my class, and then define the constructor, def init, uh, self, and then with the comma separated, all the fields that would define this data class. And then again, you would need to do self.day is a self.b is b self.c is c. But since Python 3.7, you can just import the data class from data classes, import data class. And then if you have a class from the Python documentation, let's say class inventory item, you can just add an at data class annotation above it, and then define a list of fields. User str, unit precise float, quantity on hand, int. And also you can define default values. So at quantity on hand, int is zero, would uh, add these fields. Why do we need these data classes? First, they remove all the bloat from standard data classes that we define. If you had the pleasure of defining data classes in Python or in Java, you know that if you do not use the data class annotation, then you need to define each field in the constructor and in Java also the getters and the setters. And uh, just as we have a data class annotation in Java, we have an annotation that uh, in Python, we have a data annotation in Java utilizing the Lombok plugin. So in Java, we can have the same functionality, the same concise functionality of data classes by using the Lombok plugin and then by importing the data annotation or the value annotation. And then we have the value or the data uh, annotations in order to define data classes. Data classes give us options. So when we define the at data class, we have multiple options. Uh, init, true, false representation, true, false EQ, true, false order, true, false unsafe hash, true, false frozen, true, false. So frozen, for example, would tell this data class whether it can be changed, immutable, change or not. After the creation, the init will say whether these fields will be appended to the constructor. The representation will say whether we want uh, uh, the representation method uh, updated and the, and the ordering is uh, important for us in order to compare data classes and to tell whether one is equal to the other. The data class decorator examines the class to find the fields. A field is defined as a class variable that has a type annotation, with two exceptions. Nothing in a data class examines the type specified in the variable annotation. The order of the fields in all of the generated methods is the order in which they appear in the class definition. The data class decorator adds various dunder methods to the class. If any of the added methods already exist in the class, their behavior depends on the parameter. The decorator returns the same class that is called on. No new classes are created. The data class is used just as a simple decorator with no parameters. It acts as if it has the default values documented in the signature. So the data class is typically containing only data, but there are no restrictions for it to contain other things such as functionality, but usually it's just a plain simple data class. Data class comes with basic functionality already implemented. You can instantiate, print, or compare data class instances straight out of the box. 
so it's very useful.